Yo, let's go. Understand something, men versus women. A man is a man and it's a man's world, but it's also a dedicated space for the women. But when it comes to life, men versus women is two different strong points. Men do things that women could never do. And women do things that men can never do. Understand that. And what happens is that it's a big battle going on. And the fact of the matter that it's a battle for women having to fight against men and male, male masculinity and dominance is crazy because it's nothing and nobody on this earth that dominates like a man. But that's an interesting conversation because it's coming from a man's perspective on how we deal with women, especially when it comes to business and the things that we got to do to protect our masculinity, but to also cover and protect their femininity. If that's a word, I think I fumbled it, but you get it. Let's talk about it tonight. Men versus women, wealth therapy, y'all. Let's go. Anything you want in this world is dependent on everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants to get money for the bar. I did 25 million in the last two years. I come from nothing. You gotta move the earth. You gotta take action. You gotta act. Some of y'all are scared to tell people, fuck you. Stay back, music. Right, big. Ice big, nice crib, white fig, started out just sweeping flows, not fat boy the CEO. Everybody want to stand out. You can't be the same and be different. You'll never be the best in your industry if you do what everybody else doing. You know you got the mindset. You know you got the ambition. It's just you haven't got the fuck up. Either I'ma do this shit and execute, or I'ma fucking die. You talk as well, and I'm dripping south. This time we do the sell. How many of you guys want to be multi-millionaires and create a legacy in a brand? We ain't in this for clout. We out here to get money. It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. Yes, yes, yes. A very interesting conversation um, sparked by a post that I put up. But before we get into it, what I want to do is jump into the fact of the matter. I'm talking men versus women. You got to look good, you got to feel good, and you got to smell good. Understand tonight's essence, you got to know what mood I'm in, y'all. Like, if you know, you know. If you don't know, this is probably one of them scents you got to tap into and go really get familiar with. Yo, listen, this is an old classic original Santal. Y'all got to understand, this from Creed. This Creed original Santal, this something different, y'all. This is something different here. Um, this ain't the, the, the regular Santals. It got a, a lighter, crisp, refreshing smell, different than most Santals. Um, but it's an amazing scent. I usually pair it with like uh, Tom Ford Bitter Peach. Game changer. One of the best mixes, best smells, most compliments I've ever gotten from any cologne I have. Hands down. Hands down. Original Santal, Bitter Peach. But tonight I'm wearing it by itself. I'm doing that because I need that fresh smell because I, I got to be masculine, but you got to be friendly, too, when you're talking about men versus women because we can't just smash them or dominate on women like they're men. Or we can't let them dominate on us because we're still a man because somebody is going to win at some point in life. But what happened is in business, it's always a role. But before we get into it, I cannot. I cannot. I'm on YouTube. I'm here with y'all. I can't say this before we move forward. I can't say thank you. I can't say thank you guys for tuning in to Wealth Therapy, subscribing to my YouTube, y'all. We did it. Yes, we did it. This is my YouTube 100K subscriber plaque. Um, I chose to take YouTube serious in May. End of May, almost June. Here we are in October, and I'll reach 100,000 subscribers. If you know anything about YouTube, you understand that it's not one of the easiest platforms to grow, uh, and people really got to support you and rock with you. So for you guys to subscribe, tune in with me every single Wednesday for Wealth Therapy. I thank you. It means the world to me. I can't thank you enough. 100,000 subs, y'all. I'm telling you, we build the blueprint, and then we share so everybody else can come behind. Listen. 
We live what we talk about. It's that 1% lifestyle, man. You got to be a part of the 1% when it comes to execution and work. And I don't think that that's gender specific, right? Um, I don't think it's gender specific when it comes to money. But what happens is men deal with things that women can never understand and explain. So I really can't go into it and say, hey, women don't do this or women don't got to go through this because I don't know what women go through fully in business, right? But I have had conversations with women in business and we talk about the, the groups and the things when they're building and when women are on the, on, the, on the come up, how they seem it's much more catty because their ability to work together, they feel like women don't stick together, um, but they feel like men are able to stick together. But what I, what I think a lot of people don't realize and like women that look in from the outside in, men don't stick together. Men stick together to get to a certain level, and then we have a certain level of ego and pride that actually hits, and, and, and everybody wants to be the leader or be that guy. Like, dang dad said it before, like, I'd rather do business with women because they have more loyalty. They are more emotional, naturally. They're more emotional beings than men, but... They're not as ruthless and, 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 and ego driven when it comes to business and money and competitive like men. And so when I look at it on this journey, I've helped a lot of people in business. One thing that I say about women is the attention to detail and how efficient they are when they know something and they master it. When women know something, they're efficient, they, they're on time. A lot of them are super timely and really get it done. And that's one thing that I admire because we have our strong points and we have our weaknesses. As men, we're a lot more courageous and bold, right, when it comes to doing things um, because it's places and environments that we can walk into and we're always going to be okay as a natural protector, right? We're always okay walking into dangerous environments. There's certain things that we can do and be like, yo, we're going to put it on the line. Um, women is naturally, they can't put it on the line. They got kids. And for some odd reason in the world that if something happened to a woman, the kid's going to suffer. They ain't going to have no mom. It's always perceived like it go that way. With a man, he's going to put it on the line because it's like he may leave his kids behind, but mama take care of the nest. And it's, it's a, it's a double-sided sword. Like, because it's not like we don't love our kids um, at this time in the world is men are more present in the household than ever before in history. Um, so salute to all the fathers, salute to all the fathers. I'm definitely going to salute all the fathers because at this time, men are present. More men are home and there's more two parent households than ever before in history. So salute to that because we're starting to realize that we can work together. And I think at one point what happened I think at one point, what happened was the war on drugs, the war against the black family, as we was torn apart, there's been a narrative created that it's us versus us. Like it's men versus women. It's never men versus women. One has to complement each other. A battery needs a positive and a negative. The reason being is because they offset each other. You need each other to exist. It's not one versus other. And there's no two different sides of who's better. What happened is, is, is we have we complement each other. There are different strong points in men. You do have some men who are super alpha men that are just overly, you know, dependent. I mean, independent and just all the way out and just they, they couldn't be soft if they wanted to. They couldn't communicate and express themselves if they wanted to. And it's going to take a certain type of woman to understand that man. You got some men who are super communicative, super in tune with their feelings. Y'all call them sassy, right? Or whatever y'all call them, right? And those guys need a different type of woman that's going to understand that and be able to deal with it, right? The same goes for women. You got some women who are more quiet, interpersonal, stick to themselves. They're not the outgoing speaking up popping it. You got some women that's going to pop it. It's going to be over there. That's going to be out there. That's that, that both of them could be confident, but this one's going to speak a little bit more. It's a different man for her. 
when you put all four of these individuals <laughs> in a melting pot on social media, then you put in different levels of education, then you put in levels of experience, good and bad, to all four of these people. Each one of these groups turns into four or five different groups in each group. And from the traumas and, and the way that we was brought up. And now we got this big melting pot of men versus women. And it's disgusting because it's like, at no point do I look at a woman and see like, yo, this is my competition. Even when choosing a partner, even when choosing a business partner, I'm analyzing how do we attack the finish line? How do we attack the finish line? With somebody on your team, how do we attack the finish line? Are you that person that can help me attack the finish line? If I'm a point guard, I don't need three point guards with me. If I'm a point guard, I need, I need a big man down low, drop the ball to him, understand what it is. If I'm a big man, I need somebody quick that's going to run the court. You got to understand the roles and positions when we actually out here in life. And it's not just for relationships, it's for business. And so when you analyze people in business, you got to understand the different types of personalities, the different types of people who are here and understand that on the other side of that fence, you may be one type of man. And that's the only type of man you really are tuned in tune with is the type of man you are. But you got other women on the other side of that ball that you got to be familiar with and understand that we're not competition, but our energies don't mix. Our, our upbringings don't mix. We don't complement each other. So it's not us versus us. It's just me and you, we can't go and get the, go and get the job done. We can't go get that ring. You got to offset it to who's the people that can go with you to go get that ring because men got to work with other men. Women got to work with other women, but that's where the biggest dysfunction comes in. And then you include sex. And you say men versus women. Fellas, you got to let the ladies live. As we attack life, we behind the gun. We got to be able to coexist. And it can't always be sleazeball. Call it what it is. It's, you can't always go in and, and, and be handsome and charming. You know, um, how you doing? Nice doing business with you, queen. I'm looking forward to building with you. Like, pack it up, bro. It makes people uncomfortable. It makes people uncomfortable. It just is what it is. In order for us to win in life, we got to be able to coexist. We can't be against each other or be malicious and, and, and have ulterior motives when doing business or every time we get acquainted with a woman. And it's a flip side because ladies is guilty of it too. You got to respect it in the fact that a matter of respected men and understanding that Every man don't want you. Every man don't want you. Every time a man smile at you, compliment you, open the door, give you a compliment, try to connect with you, he don't want you. I know it's a lot that have tried it, but every man don't want you. I don't care how cute you are. It is what it is. Every man don't want you. It's okay, men, some men do understand how to be friends, how to be acquaintances, and leave it at that. That's where it is. This is where it's at. And we can exist in this box. That does not mean that you're ugly. It doesn't mean that, like, women feel, like, less valuable. Like, some women feel less valuable because they think every man wants them. And if you don't, it's like, yo, there's something wrong with you. And that's never the case. But what I want to break down is it's two sides to every coin. But the one side of the coin that matter is, is that we can't, no matter how we flip it, it can't be us versus us. And we can't control other parties. All we can control is how we deal with it and what we do and how we understand these positions. 
And if somebody does step out of bounds or out of, out of, they don't fit our character, they don't fit, you know, personality wise, they don't fit driven and goal and ambitious wise and be able to support it, right? Because an ambitious man can be perfectly complimented by a woman with no ambition in organization. And an ambitious woman can be complimented by a brave man with confidence, even if he does not have ambition to be as great and excel like she does, but he has confidence to be who he is. That's a hell of a team, even in business. I understand, there's some jobs out there that men do, there's some jobs out there that women are naturally fit for. When I look at things in organization and kind of planning events and just being super warm and personal, look at like my, my, uh, we do events and, and Raina controls our events. We let Raina control our events because of the energy that she brings and that she brings to people. That's not a position for a man. So they, she wins. A man always, Hey, this it's, it's more of a feminine position, but it's still a boss position understanding that you can create, like we had a conversation about understanding that this is a lane, that this is opportunities that come from that. And it's not, oh, this is a woman's job. No, this is a woman's field of income, a woman's position in this environment that we have. As men, we, we bring a lot of men in, women are coming into like my mastermind group now. And as we do it, I realize that there are more men and women are more comfortable just being managed and welcomed and in co contact and just talking, they build, right? Because I'm a man, so they already get my masculine energy, but then they get a soft energy when they come in the person that deal with and help them out with the event. But we broke down like, listen, fifteen twenty five thousand dollar a month position when the business is scaled right. call it sexist or whatever you want, but at the, end of the go, at the end of the day, everybody around us, we figure out how do we mesh. If I needed a more dominant man, it could fulfill, but this is what mesh with my team. And so what happened is that this person starts to elevate and curates a, on the opportunity to be able to excel. Attitude is everything. So when I look at that, and I look and go, people ask about event planners. I'm like, listen, I will send people to reign over anybody when it comes to this business shit, when it comes to like dealing with events, as far as custom and being able to deal with people and having a good attitude, I'd rather send to the people I'm dealing with now. I've been in events for a long time. The way that my, the attendees give me feedback has never been like this. This is top tier. And so, My goal is, is that as we build out, we understand though that's a complimentary side to the type of person I am. I challenge you to say, okay, that's not a versus. That don't mean she's better than me. That don't mean I'm better than her. That don't mean that she's better at this job than a man could do it. It was just that it meshed in my environment better. And sometimes we gotta understand that and understand dealing with that, right? For a long time, people used to ask my wife, how you deal with Marcus dealing with doing business with women? And she'd be like, I don't, I don't have an issue with Marcus doing business with women. She was like, but Marcus don't really be doing business with women because he chooses not to. I didn't have a lot of women business partners. And it was like, and she asked like, why not? Like, and she said, people ask her like, you know, is that because he, don't trust himself, is it something like that? And I'm like, me, I know how I can talk. I'm a little aggressive when it comes to the business. And a lot of times women can't deal with that shit. I feel uncomfortable barking on women. Like I call a nigga in the middle of the night. Bro, what the fuck is you doing? Like, yo, that, that was dumb as fuck. I, 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 this is how it need to go. Because I, I, when I started building my business, I always built it when recession proof, where I started with Terrence, whether it was Eric, it was man to man. 
So we be talking like me, be like, ah, all right, boss, we're hitting me back. Like, nah, I ain't feeling that one. Yo, this ain't right. But it was masculine energy. It was never like diminishing. But this is the energy I would give off. And majority of the people in my community was men. So it was always like when I would do partnerships and things like that, I wasn't looking to build and establish with women. It was just I was already more comfortable with that energy dealing with men. And as I started bringing women into the business, I started realizing how we were slacking because I seen what my wife contributed. But then they realized that there's different personalities to other women that can allow to work in this space. You're going to have to be a little bit. Women got that dog in them. And honestly, some of these women got a little more dog in them than some of you men. I ain't going to hold you. And I started to realize that and said, oh, they got that dog in them. See, I maintain my, my, my respect level with them and allow them to be their confident self and let them. And I say, OK, some women got that dog in them. Some of them don't. The ones who don't can't be here. But the ones who do, we got a space for you. And that was one of the dopest things and real, real realizations for me is that it's not versus, it's us coexisting together versus any problem that come about, any hurdle that we got to go overcome in building this business. Because there's certain things that I could never do. I look at my chapters as it's built out and Cindy built out the chapters because of her sorority and her upbringing and her background of who she is. I could never be that person. She come, she's the, I think uh, she gonna kill me if she one of these, right? <laughs> but she has a level of understanding in the organizations and community involvement and development and edifying members and things like that in the organization that I never was experienced to and never understood. It took her, a man could have did it. But for a man to go out and develop it just with me, it, it's a little bit, if I don't understand it, it's 100% on him, then my ego and I got to trust him to be like, what you trying to do? You trying to do this for yourself? And you got to, it, it would take a certain type of energy back for me to trust and allow somebody to come in and develop that. When she came in and developed it, I would question everything she did. Why she do it? What? Looking at ulterior motives. And I got to see that everything was with peer intentions and for the betterment of not only her but the organization and every member that's in the organization as a whole and it made me realize something is that as i talk to people and, and, and like shout out to my brother uh jermaine in, in in michigan shout out to my brother dwight in new orleans right they like man nah that's big sis like that's my sister like man we out here on the front line getting whatever we got to get done and i go yo the energies that blend match and take it to the next level. And so I realized that I know it's a men versus women, but it's men and women versus any problem and any obstacle that we got to overcome. We can't look at each other like competition. The biggest thing that we got and the reason why is that we start to look at each other like competition is because insecurities that are put upon us, demands that are being made that we may see publicly. I see it for some odd reason that men need to pay all the bills. You can't tell a man that he need to pay all the bills and he's never been trained on how to generate income, how to manage his money, how to budget his money, how to grow his money, how to discipline himself. These are so many things that a man has to deal with that we don't have any training on for self-development of, of self. And we try to do it ourselves. And as men try to do it ourselves, the world says you need to do, you need to pay bills, take care of all the bills, take care of a woman, be emotionally intelligent because she wants you to listen to her, be able to communicate, um, be vulnerable, you know, keep yourself together. Do all, like it's a lot that gets put on a man's plate from the, from the world as he's trying to grow and develop. And naturally it causes a hate to the counterpart because we feel like we can't do it. And if we can't deliver on the things that we want to deliver on, 
it makes us feel less than and it, and it caused a cognitive dissonance to where it makes us say, well, what could you do more of? What you should be doing. This is what you should do. This is what you need. This is what you should be doing. You looking at it like that. Y'all need to be cooking. Y'all need to be cleaning. And it's not that you need to cook and clean to be our slave. It's that these are things that we feel like we're missing or that is taken away from us becoming or fulfilling everything else that we got to do. Help me out. It's something I, I don't want to do. Help a nigga out. That's it. It ain't nothing else but help a nigga out. But when you argue back, like, I don't have to do it, it makes it an argument of women don't want to do it. All you want to try to be is cute. Even though we love that shit. We love it. We want you to be fine. We want you to be confident. We want you to be dolled up and smell fucking amazing and smile and glow at your highest vibration that you are, you can possibly glow at. But we want to be able to glow in our masculinity too. And that puts us in a versus where we feel like if you don't do this, then you're not qualified. I don't want to do this. It's just a cognitive dissonance where it's a disconnect there where we have to find something to argue back and fight back or we butt back. Say, nah, but you ain't doing this. You gotta point out a flaw. We gotta call some now. We can't say, man, y'all don't go get money like us because then it will make us look less than. We can't say you don't get up and you don't get up every single day and go and and and, and willing to go do what I gotta do when that if if we laying in the bed at 2 a.m. and the, the, the alarm go off, you not clocking up. First on the front line, first one to the to, to the fire. If it's a fire, I'm finna die for it, making sure everybody get out safe. If it's every emergency, I'm going, I'm going out. We can't tell y'all to do what we do. So we look and we try to identify things and make it like it's role, like gender roles, because we feel like this is something that y'all should do and that y'all don't. So then we argue with you and say you less and you don't deserve it if you don't do this. But in reality. A man gets in, in, in with a woman and they figure out that they are overcoming a goal and they're working together. That woman will learn how to cook even if she don't like to cook. You can YouTube how to cook. It's nothing that they can't do when they want to do it. And when you want to win and you want to get over to the goal, they will do it. They may say they don't want to. But dogs, any man out there, no. Whatever you tell your woman to do, for the most part, if said right, position right, and it makes sense to her logic, she gonna do it. My wife watching this, and I'm gonna say it publicly. And I know she's sitting there right now, probably like, what you about to say? She probably biting her thumbs, biting her nails. What you gonna say? Check this out. I, I told my wife something after six years, seven years of being together. I said, I can't tell you what to do. I have to let you tell you what to do. <laughs> I said, hey, listen, when you make up a decision for you, it's perfect, even if it was the decision that I want. But when I make up a decision for you, you'll go, okay, but then you'll say, well, well, why did you come up with that decision? Trying to figure out my rationale or my sense on it of like, well, why did you come up with that? And I go, it took me time to figure that out. Like, I'll ask, like, when I would say something, she would say something bad, I'd be like, it just don't make sense. She'd be like, okay. But I knew it was it would trigger like, OK, well, she's trying to figure out what's my thinking on it. But if it's her thinking, I don't got to question it. Be like, yo. I tell her something like, yo, let's just use I'm on, on two. I'm like, yo, camera got to practice on third on Wednesday and this and they got to go to Kumon and doing this. 
I'm trying to leave out at this time, but I may not be back. So it's probably going to be two days. And then this weekend, um, the kids going to go with their grandparents because we need help with this. That's going to be two days out the week, two or three days out the week that they'd be with their grandparents. Like, um, you think they're ready for that? And she'll be like, nah, that's a lot on them. You know what? I'm going to stay home on Wednesday and then I'll just go on the weekend. And I'm like, okay, cool. That makes sense. But instead of me being like, hey, stay home, I'm going to go, you stay home, and then you can come on the weekend. She's like, well, why do you want me to stay home? I know this about my partner. It's us <laughs> to the victory line. We have to understand each other. My wife can look at me and be like, oh, you got you in one of those moves, like you on your Gemini shit. And be like, all right, peace out, I'm gone. And I'm like, I ain't say nothing. She be like, you ain't gotta say nothing. My response is in the morning sometimes, just I just mornings ain't my best. I'm a, I tell people, don't hit me till 10, 10 30. It's just not my best. I'll be kind of focused in and a lot be on my mind when I wake up. And so she like, she gets it, but this is us versus anything that comes our way. And we've learned that, but I've also learned that in business. What are the things that hinder and don't allow great partnerships with men versus women? And it's analyzing strong points, weaknesses, understanding of one another and understanding and identifying that we gotta exist together to get over this path. We got to. That does not make me greater. It does not make them greater because I conform to some of the needs that they need for their personality type, for their personal upbringing, for their personal personality, their dramas, I mean, the traumas that they've came through, the healing hurdles that are they're going across in their own life. I ain't had to do that. And so with that, that's one of the things that I realize now is like, okay, these are things that hinder us because we make it like it's a battle when it's not really a battle. Now, fellas, I ain't gonna let y'all down. Y'all know I'm with y'all 100%. I be positioned in these conversations a little way. Ain't nobody out here working like us. Nobody got to get the, the weight off the shoulders like a black man. But a lot of the black men, we put the weight on our own shoulders. We put the weight on our shoulders because society has done it to us. And we don't practice relief. Like we got to work on releasing the things that make us uncomfortable. We got to work on releasing things that hold on to our ego. When we ain't like coming up and I'm on the grind, worst thing you can call me was a broke ass nigga. Man, call me a bitch. Nigga, don't call me broke. I'm trying to get some money out here. I ain't no broke ass nigga. I still don't. I mean, dude, you crazy. I'm at the money. You can call me a bitch ass nigga. Don't call me a broke ass nigga. And we'll stand on it. And I'm trying to get it because this was something that, I, that was like, I liked and I wanted more of, and I wanted it abundantly. <laughs> so for me, this was one of the things that I put on myself. It was sometimes it's a gift and a curse because I put this on myself. I carried this energy. I carried this, I'm getting money by, I'm gonna go get it. I'm fit to make it happen. But this is what I'm on and what I'm after. At some points, that made me unattachable to people. That made me distance and probably ruined some relationships with potential business partners, friends, and things like that if they wasn't on this. I said in the video, like, if you ain't pumping it and standing on this, then I don't want you around me 100%. But it's a flip side to that, too, because there are good people and good relationships for people who can serve certain roles who don't have that. 
But sometimes we got to take the ego and get that weight off us and just explain like, this your position. When it comes to this and it comes to this money shit, this one I'm on, don't interfere. But this is us like sometimes relieving some of the pressure that we put on ourselves and the weights we put on ourselves because shit loaded. We'll take it. Like, yo, load it up. Put it on my shoulders. I'm walking through. I'm going to walk through the wall. Put it on my shoulders. You got another problem? Put it on my shoulders. It's another problem? Put it on my shoulders. Cool. Put my helmet on. I'm loading up. Every single day we get loaded up with problems, whether it's from the outside world or from us. And nobody could see it. Nobody know that you got all of it on your shoulders. You just allow it to kind of stack on. Yep. Okay, cool. It's a problem over here with this. I got a fire to put out. I know I got some shit brewing over here. That ain't the best in my life right now this ain't going right. Shit, I'm, I'm, I ain't eating right. Been drinking too much. I've been smoking too much. I, I ain't focused. I'm, you know, a little sad. And it'd be like, things ain't going right. Guess what? These are things that we allow to be on us. And we can choose if we want them on us or not. I understand how to communicate and do certain things to release. And that's where like these conversations come in because I want you to know like whenever it's a problem and we got a lot on our shoulders, it's us versus the world. It don't be us versus women. It ain't us versus men. It's, it be us versus the world and anybody that come into this, 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 into my circle because of the energy and the pressure that I got on me. Women, y'all go through the same thing. Y'all put the pressure on y'all. Y'all feel the pressure from society the life that women live. Sis, let me break it down to you. Every woman don't deserve Birkins. Every woman won't have them. Every woman won't be on private jets and private islands walking in. Every woman won't have it. Like every man won't become a billionaire. Every man, believe me, every man wants certain level of success in certain things. Everybody can't, won't reach it. Not by themselves. Not by themselves. It takes a village. Can you accomplish it 100%? But when you think that you're going to do it by yourself, you start going out into the world being a, a, a scavenger and just trying to figure out how to get what it is that you want and not being willing to contribute to the team and, and, and look at the overall goal that I might not get it today. But this somebody I'm willing to sacrifice with that's going to sacrifice these some girls I could sacrifice with. And cool, we may not be on a PJ this year, but two years of us really grinding and being intentional with what we working at, not being catty, not looking at her, or she got a better relationship than me right now. She got a man financing her right now and, 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 and speaking behind women's back and biting their back out. These are things that help you take it to the next level. But it's understanding and analyzing that because I see it so often in our community. You see people fall out, friends fall out, women especially just backbiting each other and it being malicious. And it's just like, yo, if y'all got one goal and everybody got a goal and you learn how to work together and work with each other, you will get much further because women are excelling at a higher rate than men, especially black men in today in today's society like i look at women and i see the businesses that they do i see the way that they execute how consistent they are and it's just like a lot of women be working and they out here a lot of y'all but y'all be by yourself and it's like like why it's like you know it's just i had so many bad experiences with women well guess what it's a lot of women out there you just have to choose wisely and analyze how to handle those problems you got to choose like, hey, because this is for business and this goes for anybody in, in business. It's not, I can't tell women how to be women. But what I could tell you is how to be a person in business, how to be a person in relationship. This is all the way across the board. Analyze who you are. Analyze your strong points. But analyze the, the things that you don't like and be able to identify them and be okay with not associating with people when you see that they have the traits that you don't like but also identify the traits that you do like and purposely build with those people and keep them close. Sometimes you got to be a friend when it's not in your favor. Mm, Y'all finna hear me on that one. Sometimes you got to be a friend 
when it's not in your favor. Everybody knows what they want as a friend, but you have to sometimes be the friend when things are slapping you in the face, when this person then bit your back. After they probably showed you or gave you examples of why they're your friend and why you can trust them and why you can count on them. But it's gonna be a time where they show you why you shouldn't or a time when they let you down or a time when they need you to be their friend. And at that point, that's where things get tested. And that's when it becomes a you issue where you start to realize like, okay, what type of person am I? Because has this person endured things for me? Has this person been understanding for me when I wasn't my best, when I was sad and I, or I was going through something and I wasn't answering my phone, I wasn't texting back, I was a little distant, I needed my space. And they understood it, gave it to me. And then once I got back to it, we was like, nothing ever happened. Okay, well, they, they may not repay me back on that need that they may not cash in that you owe me a friend card the same way. They may repay it back to you as, I know you don't like this person, but me and this person friends, and I want you to understand that. It's two different scenarios, but guess what? It's two different, it's the same demand of, I need you to be a friend. I need you to be understanding. I need you to be my partner. I need you to be my business partner. These are things that go into life that helps us grow. As we get better with each of these scenarios, we become better when it comes to dealing with men and women, setting boundaries and understanding the boundaries that we set. I'd never be one of the men to tell women, oh man, you shouldn't dress provocative or you shouldn't dress sexy or you shouldn't do that because that just make men want you. It's like, listen, men, it's like telling a man he shouldn't get his hair cut. Man, you shouldn't get fly and smell good. Like it should be illegal for me to smell as good as I smell right now. Like, but you can't tell a man that. So when a man is operating in, in, his, in, his, in his God, you can't tell a woman she shouldn't either. You should be able to respect it and salute the God in them. Like they got to salute the God in us, but keep it at a level, at a surface level of what this relationship is and where it's built at. Simple as that. We can't control nobody else in this world. We can only control ourselves. And I see it so much. And that's why it's just one of them things that kind of it eat at me when I see us battling each other. And I just be like, I made a comment to one dude. I kind of hurt his feelings because I kind of went off. But I'm like, yo, y'all be talking about things and identifying things about women and men that don't work and men have problems. That's why rich men be having problems, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yo, bro, newsflash, everybody got problems. Rich men, broke men, hardworking men, men with silver spoons in their mouth. The same for women. We all got problems dealing with the opposite sex because it's a lot to take in, 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 in into this equation to figure out how it meshes together, how it operates together, what personality am I dealing with, and identifying myself to figure out who I am, what's my strong points, what's my weaknesses, what's my problems that people have with me, and how can I deal with that with certain people. These are all things that come into this circle. And so when I look at it and I go, we all, every man and woman got a problem. But if we, if we focus in on the problem, how do we ever get to the solution? What's the solutions that we need to make it work to where it's not men versus women? It's us versus any hurdle versus anything going on in life. We on the same team together. Women don't act like you don't feel good being around men. And men can't act like they don't feel good being around women. A man walking to a club and there's nothing but men in there, he says it's a sausage fest and he's leaving. If it ain't enough feminine energy in the building, he out. Women, it's the same for y'all. Except for them little girls trips that everybody be complaining about. Nah, I'm joking. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna be the petty one. I ain't. <laughs> but it's the same thing. Is that sometimes you require masculine energy. Certain environments. It just is what it is. 
And so some and don't say no, because if you and your girls go on a trip to Jamaica, you're going to want some kind of security, a male driver, something, somebody to help. Hey, if something go wrong, we don't need all women here. We need a man somewhere to help out. But tire go flat. Something. And don't attack me and say women could change tires. I know you can. All right. Salute to y'all. But my point is we need opposite energies. We can't exist without them. And plus, women go through childbirth, uh, menopause, and periods every month. Meanwhile, fellas, ah, we be chilling. Y'all got a lot of emotional damage that be going on with y'all. Fellas, only thing we fight is receding hairlines and going bald. It be like, yo, when I'm going to have to cut it off or, or can I keep it? That's realistically all we really got to deal with other than the societal things. But like, you got to understand, ladies be going through a lot. When it come to that, like menstrual cycle, childbirth, menopause, like it's a lot they got to go through a life that messes with their emotions. And you know, only thing we be looking at, like, yo, we getting a little thin in the edges up there, my boy. That's it. Do I gotta cut it off, or do I gotta go to Turkey and get the Acon? That's all we gotta deal with when it come to like us and staying in shape a little bit. That's it. But they got that battle too. Um. Now I'm being petty, but honestly, um, let's just let's just work on my key tonight is that I don't think it's a men versus women. I think it's a, a understanding one another and figuring out how to build, grow as a community and be able to go to the next level as human and as 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 people reflecting in ourselves and stop being so hard. Even when we see men or women say things on these podcasts and be like, I don't agree with it. But I'm going to allow them to be to live in their ignorance because it's probably something going on with them that they uncomfortable with. You know, they said I did that video and but it was like rich ass niggas get off the stay off them podcast. Y'all rich niggas stay off the podcast talking all that dumb shit. Talk about what a woman ain't got to do. 100 percent. I get it. Because it's another human being, it's another person, it's another bracket, it's another experience, it's another level of requirements. Why would a man, why y'all don't agree in and both feel like, like you feel? Because I feel a certain way from my experiences in life. And let's be clear. I've experienced certain things in life that helped me take my life to the next level and realize what contributes and what doesn't contribute, what's a major contributing factor and what's not a major contributing factor based off of God blessing me with certain situations and for me to be in the position that I'm in today, I'm blessed. And so I speak from a blessed standpoint of experience that 99% of people don't. So when I'm speaking, I'm, I'm speaking from a 1% level of exposure, experience, and understanding. I'm not speaking for the 99%. So fellas, I want you 100% to understand that when I say that, I ain't trying to relate to you. I'm speaking for myself. And I'm not looking to speak from the, oper the, the position where I didn't understand this because I've been blessed to be in a position where I do understand this. But this is only for me. It does not make it true for you. And every man who gets into a position to be able to take care of his family, be able to provide and do everything that he desires and then says, these are the requirements that I, I need from a woman because he looks into himself. Some men will always need that woman to come cook, clean every night, rub my goddamn feet because this is what makes, this is what soothes me. This ain't a money issue. This is a personal issue development of what certain people need. A man not wrong for saying he want a woman that cook and clean. This is what makes me happy. I feel good coming home eating my woman's cooking. I know that you've made this. It, feel, it tastes different. I'm sorry. When somebody you love cook, it tastes different. It's a different feel. It 100% is. But everybody doesn't 
required that as a necessity. Some people prioritize different things and that's okay. That's where we gotta come to the grounds at, fellas. Just be clear. I, I was gonna be petty and, 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 and going to another rabbit hole about it, but let's just be clear. It's a difference in requirements and there's nothing wrong with that though. It's totally okay. And so I salute like men to be able to communicate it, but we got to be able to communicate it from a standpoint of not tearing somebody else down or tearing somebody else's requirements or the things that they see fit or deem fit to help them make it like that's wrong. And this is right. You got to understand and explain it to us like, hey, this is the things that make me happy and make me feel comfortable. These are the things that warm my soul. These are the things that just put a smile on me and, and, and that I just, I love for a woman to do for me. I don't want to go out to eat. I can eat out when I'm out, and, but I don't want that. I want a woman to just, just make that, just make me feel warm. That's what I need. I need hugs. I need my feet rubbed. I need to feel like everything else in this world, the one place I could be soft at is right here. And these are the things that make that I appreciate from my woman. Can't nobody argue with that. But you know what they argue with? Man, shit, if a woman don't cook a clean motherfucker, gonna have to get out. Shit, going 50 50. What? Now, nah, woman, like, so if I don't cook a clean, you telling me that I ain't worthy enough to be in a relationship that that's all we can do? That's all I got to offer? I ain't cooking shit. That's what they start doing. They start not cooking because they feel like cooking is something that diminishes them or make them like, hey, it's a gender role. But if you told a woman, hey, this is this is why I would like for you to cook hell. I don't give a damn if it don't even taste that good. My man got a video. It's a video. I said, yeah. She was like, how is it? He said, I had better food in the kitchen cafeteria. But I bet you his monkey ass don't eat it. He's accustomed to, to her cooking. It feel different. My point is, is sometimes it's the message on how we deliver it. Women saying, I ain't going 50 50 with a man on no bills. <laughs> they go 100% by yourself, struggling, uh, uh, Sarah. You ain't doing the best by yourself. Why wouldn't you want to go 50 50? Shit, we can help each other. Let's figure out how we can save more money and build out of it. But when you come in and say what you're not going to do, well, shit, I'm the, if I'm going to go 100% by myself, and then you telling me you, you ain't going to cook and clean, and I got to go 50-50, and, and you're not going 50-50 on this? What does that do for me? What do it do for me? What's the upside for a man? I could be ambitious, and these are the things I'm willing to do. Cool. But lead with that? And turn that other shit down some and be willing to compromise and be like, I don't mind cooking and cleaning. It just ain't my strong suit. So I might fuck some Alfredo up. I may burn the spam sandwich. It just is what it is. I might forget to put water in a cup of noodles every now and then. But nigga, I'm going to get you a meal some way, somehow. You're going to eat. It is what it is. But you got to convey the message that way. Let them know I'm willing to do it. As long as you're willing and you put effort for it. Man can't complain. Now it ain't me versus you. It's us versus your monkey ass not putting goddamn water in the noodle cup. It's us versus you didn't make the eggs first. I mean, you made the eggs first. It's us versus when you made the noodles on the stove, you put the packet of, the, the, the packet of seasoning in the water. Don't act like I'm the only one who come. What we're not going to do is act like I'm the only one that come from this. I know I'm not the only one that come from this. Y'all know. These are the things that we got to deal with. No, people laughing in the comments like, yeah, we, we come out them environments where these are some of the meals we was used to, all right? The woman going, she going to make you a hot pocket and the dad just going to be a little, it's going to be hard when she made the hot pockets left in the microwave too long, so it's hella hard. You got to break it in the middle and you got to eat Got to eat it from the middle and stop at the end because the edge of the, the hot pockets be too hard because she left it in the microwave too long. Fellas, I know I ain't the only one that been through it. I've been through it. 
Now my wife make oxtails. Franzini. You know what I'm saying? She's somewhere right now throwing, swinging at the ear like, you got me twisted. Listen, I lived off Rotel for a year, y'all. Cheese dip. Me, please. This is the things that we grow into and understand. But they're willing to grow with us and do what we need. And you can always get better. You can always learn more and you can always grow. But these are the things that help us go to the next level. My wife would complain and say, men need to clean up the house. Pick your drawers up off the floor. And pick your drawers up. When you get up, throw your plate in the garbage. Put the milk back in the refrigerator. 100%. Take the garbage out. It would have to be told to me. Fellas. Get to a position where you make enough money to pay somebody to come do all that shit she wants you to do for you. Let's go, men versus women. It ain't a men versus women thing. It's us versus the problem. Instead of me having to pick my clothes up, I bought a housekeeper. Come on, stop playing. It's a solution for everything. So just understand that. But to get to some of the solutions, it's going to take some money. It's going to take some hard work. And you're going to have to get gain it on your road to building wealth. But these are the things that we're going to have to overcome. These are some of the healing hurdles we're going to have to overcome as we continue to build out, grow, and take it to the next level. But just remember, when y'all out here on social media realize it ain't me versus women. Let's stop that and understand that it's us versus any problem, any solution that come our way and that we need each other to coexist. I want to make sure y'all like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and forward this video to somebody out there that needs to see it, man. Y'all listen, I need the gold. Like this, this silver one looks good. It's amazing, but I need it to go gold. And so I need y'all to keep supporting. I need y'all to stay in with me. I'm here locked in with y'all every single Wednesday live, giving viewpoints that I see when it comes to building wealth and just therapeutic topics. And I think I'm gonna start going into a little bit more talking about the money a little bit more. But I need y'all to like, subscribe, and share this video. Send this video to somebody that needs to see it. Tell them what your favorite part was. Tell them what you disagree with. Shit. Let me know in the comments what you agree with. Let me know what you disagree with. But just let me know in the comments so I can see as I'm analyzing myself because I can always get better, y'all. Let's go. Wealth therapy. Anything you want in this world is dependent on everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants to get money. But why? I did 25 million in the last two years. I come from nothing. You gotta move the earth. You gotta take action. You gotta act. Some of y'all are scared to tell people, fuck you. Stay back, music. Ride big. Ice big. Nice crib. Wife big. Started out just sweeping flows. Now fat boy the CEO. Everybody wanna stand out. You can't be the same and be different. You'll never be the best in your industry if you do what everybody else doing. You know you got the mindset. You know you got the ambition. It's just you haven't got the fuck up. Either I'ma do this shit and execute, or I'ma fucking die. We talk as well, and I'm dripping south. This time we do the sell. I know who getting money would affect me mentally. How many of you guys want to be multi-millionaires and create a legacy in a brand? We ain't in this for clout. We out here to get money. It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. It's my wealth therapy.